Hey everyone, I'm going to teach you how to create an RPM for the Fedora operating system. The first thing you have to do is open up Terminal and run a few commands. What these commands will do is install some core development tools that are needed in order to create RPMs. The first command you need to run is sudo yum install at development tools. This will obviously install some development tools that are needed for packaging. Um, this install is going to take maybe 10 or 15 minutes, so you should pause the video and come back. Okay, so once it's done downloading and installing, you're going to want to install the Fedora Packager. This is just something else that is needed in order to create and package RPMs. Along with this, you're also going to need a method of retrieving files. This will just make it easier for getting the source files for the RPM that you want to package. So now it would be best to run this command which will install the software if you haven't already installed something similar. So this won't take that long to install so we'll just wait a few moments. Um, yeah, so it's done now. So what you're going to want to do now is create a mock user. And what this will do is it will let you create RPMs without having to worry of losing any data. And one thing to keep in mind is that you should never create RPMs as the root user because this could have devastating effects on your computer. So now you just want to run these commands which will create a new user called make RPM and now just type in your password, um, retype it, and then just add it to the mock group by running this command as well. Permission denied. Oh, okay. I got it. Forgot sudo. Just retype that, and now it should be created. Okay, so now you should just log into the new account that you made so you can start creating RPMs. Okay, so I've logged out and logged back in into the new account I just made. And now it's time to set up the build environment. So just run RPM dev dash setup tree and this will take care of everything for you. So this will create a new directory called RPM build and you want to navigate to the sources folder inside this directory. So what I'm going to be packaging into an RPM is actually just a really simple Hello World program. Now while this program is simple, it does require that we do all the necessary components of building any RPM that you might find. So this is actually a great way of learning how to create packages. Okay, so here comes the hard part. Um, the next step is to change directory to the specs directory. And then we're going to have to create a new spec file for the RPM that we're going to build. What the spec file is, is it's a set of instructions about how the RPM is supposed to be built. And once we do this correctly, then we are done pretty much. So just run this command to create the new spec file called hello.spec and now I'm going to open up the file. You could use like Emacs or whatever to open it up but I like gedit a little bit better so I'm going to do that. Okay. So here we go. The specs file and hello.spec. Okay, so this is the basic template for a specs file. So the first thing you have is the name, and this is just the name of the RPM. In this case, it's hello. Next is the version, and this is the upstream, the version of the upstream. 
So this is 2.8. And then we have the release number. This is the release of this actual package. So this would be the first release. Um, the next thing is a summary. And you want to just start the first letter with a capital. Because if you don't, then RPM lint will complain afterwards. So just make sure you do that. A sample build of a simple Hello World program. Next is the license. So this is licensed under the GPL version 3 or higher. And the URL for things like more information about this is just here. Okay, so you might have noticed that I'm typing something a little bit weird for the name. This is just because you always want to embed things like these name variables so that changes to this will go to the right place. This will just make it easier in the future when you're changing things or stuff like that. Okay, so next is the source. Um, this is just the source of the actual file that we're using to build the RPM. Okay, so as you can see, I'm using the same type of embedding that I did before, but this time I'm also embedding the version number because that's part of the URL. Okay, so the next step is to fill out the build requires part. This is what the build requires to actually install. It's the dependencies. So in this case, it's just get text. And then it's the just the regular requires. And this is everything that the RPM will require to actually install the RPM. So simple enough. Build requires is the dependencies for the actual build. And requires is, are the dependencies for the install. So there are these things called scriptlets. Um, so when the user installs the RPM, you might want some commands to be run. And this is done through scriptlets. Um, so the reason I have two different requires fields is because this is just different requires that the build will need throughout the install. So now I just got to fill out the description field. Um, this is just a simple hello world program. Okay, so next is just the preparing for the actual build, and all you're doing is setting it up. So, yeah, after you set it up with the prep, you have to actually configure the build, and this is done with these commands. You have to configure it first, and then you're done. So the complicated part is the actual install portion of it. So the install portion of the spec file is just to configure the install of the actual RPM. Um, and the find language uh, macro is to configure the translations part of the Hello World RPM. And that's also the reason that we use get text for translations. But the main function is of the install portion is to just copy files from the build directory into the build root directory. So as you can see, we are using macros again. This is because um, that when you change like the directory you're actually building it in, the macro will update itself accordingly, and you don't have to actually do anything to it. So. That's a big plus, otherwise you would have to build it in the same exact directory every time. So if you recall the scriptlets I was talking about before, this is the part about scriptlets. Um, these are just the commands that are going to be run when installing the actual build. So in the scriptlet you have essentially two parts. One of them is when the script that's going to be run and the other is the actual shell command so i can as you can see um 
you have the post which says that this is going to have to ha this is going to happen after the package is installed and then you have the shell command that's going to run afterwards so there's just going to be one more script lit and this is just before the package is uninstalled for this scriptlet. And this shell command just has to do with stuff about uninstalling the uninstalling the actual RPM. And again, I'm using macros. Remember that the macros are just a way of automatically updating the value. So for example, this allows you to use a different name or install it in multiple directories. So this means that when you change the name, everywhere that you use the name macro, it changes. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Okay, so next we have the file section. And this is just the list of files that are going to be installed. So you have the doc, um, you have the authors, authors, the changelog, you have the copying, news, and all that good stuff. And here we have but another macro. And yeah, so without macros, building RPMs would be literally impossible because you would have to manually change everything each time you wanted to build it in a different location or name it something differently. That would be extremely annoying and RPMs would just be impossible to use. And now we are approaching the last step of the spec file. And that would be the changelog section. All the changelog section is, it are the changes that have been made for the package. So this section is extremely straightforward. You just have to follow this specific format and you should be fine. So this is just a little bit extra typing and we are all set to go. Okay. Okay, so this is the finished change lock section. So now that we've created the spec file, it's time to now try to actually build the RPM and see if we get any errors. Okay, so now I just have to navigate back to the terminal. If I can find it. Okay. So now we want to check to see if there are going to be any compiling errors. So we'll run rpm lint. Hello.spec. This will check to see if there are any errors. Or any warnings too. Okay. Hit enter. And wait for its response. So it didn't complain about anything, which is great. So now we'll try to build the RPM. So RPM build BA unknown action. Oh, okay. It's one word. Sorry. RPM build. So RPM build dash BA hello dot spec. And then it should start building it. This might take a little bit, but once it's done, you'll have an RPM that's ready to be installed. Thanks for watching, and have fun creating RPM.